My name is Okoro Blessing in Kiroka, and I'm popularly known as Blessing See You. Don't mind my shirt, my powder had it all stained. How are you guys doing? Oh! <laughs> so today we're going to be having a very wonderful topic, and I thought I should dish it out as it is hot. So, um, there is one common mistake a lot of people make in marriage. I'm going to teach you that one common mistake a lot of people make in marriage so let's quickly understand this so i want you to pay attention open your ears and open your heart and trust me by the time i'm done with you you would understand where blessing is coming from my name is okoro blessing in kiroka and i'm popularly known as blessing ceo the number one most controversial relationship therapist in Africa. You already know that. Why your prayers might never work in marriage. I know some of you are coming with the religious buhaha. Some of you are very religious. No, blessing, don't say that. God can solve all the problem. God, no, blessing, don't say that. Prayers will always work. The Bible says we should pray with that. I know you are coming with all those your jargons. But my darling, I want you to pay attention. Why that your prayer is not working? Because some of you are praying and it's not working. <laughs> some of you used to sleep in church. And begin, repe saka, dobo, dobo, dobo. You go to church from Monday to Sunday. I want to tell you why your prayer is not working. And some of you are saying, God, why is that you keep blessing that unbeliever? That runs gay. God is blessing that runs gay more than you. That runs girl's relationship is succeeding more than your marriage that is going to church. I'm going to tell you why your prayer might never work in marriage. Because some of you get married. And don't put in efforts in your marriage, but you put in more efforts in your prayers. Let me tell you something, my daddy. There is no amount of prayer you pray without work that will happen. You're wasting your time. The problem is that a lot of you religious people are too entitled. Many religious people know how to quote what God said he's going to do for them. If you see the religious people, they'll tell you what the Bible said. The Bible said, the Bible said, but the same Bible said, I will bless the work of your hands. Some of you want solution. You don't want to walk. You just want manna to fall from heaven. Some of you want God to bless your marriage, but you're not ready to put in work. You are the same person that you are. Let me tell you something about prayer before we go into the matter. One thing about prayer is simple. If you are praying and you are not ready to leave something for another thing to come into your life, the prayer cannot work. When you begin to pray, you are praying for God to show you the things to let go. So that the things you are praying for will come in. But some of you want to be praying, Rapa seke seke seke, you are not ready to let go. You are telling God, give me the right man. You are not ready to leave the wrong man alone. God, give me the right woman. Leave the wrong woman alone. You don't want to leave the wrong woman. So there is no way the right man will come into your life because you refuse to leave the wrong man. That's why I said, instead of pray for solution, pray for guidance. Some of them are reading the comment section saying, blessing, no. Blessing, no. God is going to give you solution and guidance. Let me tell you something. When it comes to solution, you have the power to solve any problem. That is one part of the Bible most of you do not understand. If you are a Christian and you read your Bible, you will know how powerful you are. I said, if you have the right guide, you can solve any problem. You don't need to go to God. The reason why God made you out of his own image is because he has given you the ability to solve problems so that you're not going to be disturbing him. Some of you are disturbing God because you have the ability to solve problems. The only thing you need is guide. I'm going to teach you something. Have you ever wondered why Solomon prayed for wisdom? Solomon did not pray for wealth. Solomon, Solomon said, God, give me wisdom. Wisdom is guidance. Like I said in my post, some of you know where you are going to, but you don't know how to get there. Some of you want your marriage to work, but you don't know how to make it work. There are two things. You know what you want, but you don't know how to go about it. You want your marriage to work, but you don't know how to make it work. I see a lot of people, it is always good. My marriage will work in Jesus' name. My, this is my own that will fail. You are only good in verbal words. You want it to work, but you don't know how to make it work. It is not by shouting, my marriage will work in Jesus' name. It's by understanding how to make the marriage work. That is what is called guidance. 
when you understand how to make your marriage work, have you not found the solution? Do you need to be praying, Rabba, Seke, Papa, Papa, Simbaram, Bam, 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 Bam? The problem is, religion has made many of you so lazy in your brain. And that's why I'm not a religious person. I'm a Christian, but I'm not religious. Religion makes you not to think. Religion builds your expectation. You see that I'm expecting manna to fall from heaven. That's what religion does to many of you. You only go to church when you need solution to a problem. That's the only time most of you are in church. Most of you sleep in church from Monday to Sunday because there's a problem. You're looking for child. You're looking for husband. You're looking for money. You're looking for work. That's why you always go to church. There is always a motive. Let me tell you something, my darling. God is not stupid. Church is for worship. It is not a solution ground. That's why a lot of pastors are beginning to use your brain. What did I say? Church is for worship. It is not a solution ground. Church is supposed to be a place you go every day and tell God, Thank you! For at least giving me life. But no. You don't go to church. You only want to go there when you are looking for a husband. That is why your pastors will be using you to do hanky-panky. You go pray from Monday to Sunday. You go pray, Kaya! Some of you now go to church, go pray. If you pray, finish, come get the husband. You know how to keep the husband. You need to pray to get husband. Now to understand how to keep the husband when he come. Because husband will reach everybody. Whether you pray or you not pray, husband will come. Guidance. It's like knowing how to sing. You can sing very well. You want to be the, be you want to be the best musician in Africa, in the whole world. But you don't know how to go about it. So when you are praying, you are going to say, God, guide me to that person who is going to show me the road to becoming the best musician in Africa. Lord, guide me to Don Jazzy. Lord, guide me to Two Face. Lord, guide me to Tiwa Savage. Lord, that is guidance. You already know the solution. Once you are guided to Tiwa Savage or Don Jazzy, you don't blow. The solution is in you. You are the problem solver. The problem is that most of you don't want to look inward. You are always looking for somebody to blame. Your work is to sit down and be blaming. It is that girl in my village. My aunties, uncles, uncles. That, that is your problem. Religion have made many of you push the blame. Because each time you go to church, your pastor will tell you that somebody is chasing you from a village. Your pastor will tell you you have marine husband. You have marine wife. You have spiritual. They make your brain so null and void. They give you a perception that somebody is chasing you. Now lie. A lot of the problem that you have, you are the cause. And you are the solution. Like I said, for you to solve a problem, you must let something go. If you want something new to come into your life, you need to clear paths for that thing to come in. When you want to buy a new car, you go clear paths where you go take the pack that new car where you want to buy. So you go got to come out the old one. If you don't get space for your company, you go come out the old one, pack a mouse, so begin pack the new one for that. But you must clear something for something to come. Some of you are praying without letting things go. And it is only guide that can enable you to understand what to leave alone for the good things to come into your life. Most of you are your problems. You are the one holding your destiny. Nobody's holding you. Guidance. That's why I say pray to God to guide you. You can solve any problem if you have the right guide. Marriage is the sweetest thing that can happen to anybody. But when you get into marriage, you want to push blame. You don't want to walk. You just want to sit down and be telling me, it is him, oh! My, my, ever since I married my husband, he has been chasing women. Ever since I married, you always want to push blame. Ah, yeah, you don't want to walk. And you know the bad thing about pushing blame? When you always push blame, you never take correction. That's the crazy thing about blame pushing. I, as a coral blessing, I have gotten to a stage in my life whereby I don't push blame on people. If something happened to me, I look in what I ask myself, where did I go wrong? Because when you always look inward, you become a better person. Some of you have ruined your life today because you are chasing people that are not chasing you. If you hit your leg, ah, in my village people, your business do not go well, your village people. Your marriage do not go well, your village people. Relationship, your village people. You do not see everything in your village people. It's a lie. So you focus so much on chasing people that are not chasing you. While the problem is you. Guidance. So, you have to channel your prayer points. 
So that's the reason why it looks as if you've been praying from year to year and God is not answering your prayer. God is saying, baby girl, you have the solution. Baby boy, you have the solution. When you marry, you pray. You pray for the wrong things. You, God, please, make my husband to stop cheating. That's not possible. God cannot make your husband to stop cheating. God, touch my husband's heart so that he will stop cheating on me. Blunt and lie. That's an unrealistic lie from the pit of hell. God cannot make your husband to stop cheating. Your husband will stop cheating if he wants to. Because it was not God that made him to be cheating. So that prayer you are praying is a rubbish prayer. If you want to pray and your husband is a cheat, tell God, God, give me the wisdom to follow this cheating man. I need wisdom. It is your wisdom that will enable your husband to stop cheating. A lot of cheating men stopped cheating because they were with women who had wisdom. There is how to follow cheating men if they're ready to stay there. They are not ready to stop. They will stop when they want to stop. But it is your wisdom that to following them that will enable them to stop. It is not your prayer. That's why I say pray for guidance. Don't pray for solution. The solution is not in your prayer. It's not in by your rapa seke seke. It doesn't work. You're wasting your time. Pray to God to guide you. When you put your knees down to pray, say, God, give me wisdom. How do I make this marriage work? I don't know how. I don't know how. I don't know how. I don't know. I want the marriage to work, but how do I make it work? Then you see the wisdom of God begin to come into your head. Something will start telling you, when your husband is talking, don't nag. When your husband come back late in the night, don't shout. When a girl call your husband's phone, don't shout. There is something that will be telling you when you want to shout, baby girl, calm down. Maybe when a girl call your husband, and normally you used to scream, and you want to scream, something just tell you, baby girl, calm down. Don't, don't scream, just overload, don't scream. That's the voice of God giving you wisdom, telling you to change your strategy. That you have been shouting for two years and the man did not still change. My darling, stop shouting. If you want to get a different result, you need to change your strategy. That is what is called wisdom. That's what is called guide. That's what I do to you people every day. I guide you. With guidance, you will not even have a lot of problem. With the right guide, you don't even have problem. Because you won't have problem. If you know where you they go, you're not going to miss road. What did make you they miss road now? Because say you won't go Lagos, but you don't know how to reach Lagos. So they go carry you go different places, you go miss road, then you can't delay you from reaching Lagos. But if you been get one person, we go hold you by the hand, guide you on how to go to Lagos. You go reach Lagos in six hours, in twelve hours. Now guide you. When you have guide, you are blessed. Guide simply means I go show you road. It's like vision and mission. Vision simply means you know what you want. You want to be an actress. You want to be a musician. You want your marriage to work. Mission simply means you don't know how to go about it. You're, you've already identified what you want is vision. Mission simply means that you're not going to start figuring how to go about that thing you want. Most of you want your marriage to work, but it's not working. If you like, pray from today to tomorrow. It will not still work. That is why pastor open opened office on your head. They go collect offering from your head. They go carry you go water. They go burn midnight candle. Some of them go knock you. Problems today. A client of mine came to my office and told me that she went to her pastor for solution. Her husband was cheating on her. And she told her pastor. The pastor started giving her three days fasting and four days fasting. From fasting, pastor begin breast breasts. From breast, pastor begin finger. From finger and pastor begin focus. See, young woman, we go report to him, pastor, saying, husband, they cheat, don't turn cheat too. With him, pastor, we supposed to help him solve problem. A lot of you are victims of this. You are sleeping with your pastor. We know! From prayer point. The question is, did they solve the problem? No! Did the seven days fasting solve the problem? Mba! It rocked you into another problem just because you don't want to think. My pastor, my pastor, you think we don't know? We know. Shut up. We know. If we talk, you say the Bible say. No wonder you always want to defend religion 
because that's where you people hide to commit most of your atrocities. The day with thunder go fire on eh? you go bad where where. I did not say don't go to church. I say go to church for the right reasons. Go to church and worship God. Go to church and say thank you. Go to church and bless the name of the Lord. Go to church and visit. But don't go to church for solution. There's no solution in church. The solution is you. Go to church and tell God thank you. Go to church and bless other people. People you are more blessed. You can go and give offerings to help build the house of God. You can go and help charity. Don't go to church for solution. Don't go to church. I told you before, don't go to church because you're looking for a husband. That's the most stupid thing you would do. Or because you're looking for a wife. There is no wife in church. Neither is there husband there. It's you that will see a woman you like and say, okay, I want to make her my wife. So what are you going to church to one? So what are you praying for exactly? So God should mold woman and give you. The one that God molded and gave Adam. Adam came and said, God, it is the woman you gave me that made me chop fruit. You are the one that will choose the woman you will marry. So the solution is not in church. The solution is you. Your pastor cannot even give you a solution. Your pastor can only guide you. That's what is called counseling. Counseling is... So if you have a pastor, a real man of God, I'm not, I'm not talking about all these men of God that are... A real man of God. The only thing a real man of God can do for you is guidance. You know, I find it so weird when people go and say, Pastor, pray for me. You know, get out. You communicate more with God. Pastor can add to your prayer. But not giving your problem to pastor and tell him to pray for you. You know, sometimes, you know, the common Africans, you know, when I, when, when some people come to my office, you know, some of my clients come when they have finished going to pastors. And I ask them, why do you come? They say, they would have gone to prophets and they did not get solution. They will not come to my office. And they will say, oh, blessing. It's just common sense. When you come to my office, I don't give you anything to drink or anything to eat. I just remind you of how stupid you have been. Most people, when they leave my office, they'll be like, blessing, I've been stupid. I'll say, I know, I just told you so. He said that you want to continue being stupid or you want to stop being stupid. That's what I do. I don't give you anything to rob. Neither do I give you anything to drink. And if I start giving you something to rob or drink, trust me, I'll be a billionaire. You know, the common Nigerians, the common Africans don't like truth. If I decide to start selling something in a bottle now, I'm telling you that if you drink it, your marriage will work. I will buy bands. Because you people like deceit. You people like lies. You people are always looking for a solution. You know, that's a lie. You go drink that thing, you go tired. If you drink the first bottle, I will tell you, make you come back again. Say the reason why you, you, it did not work is because you did not drink it well. Did you drink it four times a day? You say me, uh, do you drink it by this time? You say, yes, ma. I'll say it is because when you drank it, you looked back or you urinated. Did you urinate when you say, yes, ma? I said, oh, that's the problem. That's what you like, drama. Your life is like this because you like drama. Unrealistic people. You are hovering around lies. It's time to wake up. Marriage no hard. Now you they make them hard. That's the sweetest thing. That's the simplest thing. But no. You are looking for who is chasing <laughs> Is that girl on Instagram? That one that is always liking my husband picture. Is that girl? That is secretary. Is it like? You now leave your home. You forget to cook. You forget to make your husband happy. You now start focusing on that girl. That girl is not your problem. You only made her your problem because you are looking for the easiest person to push the blame on. You know it's so sweet to push blame. When you push blame, you now relax and be forming sense. It wasn't me or it was my husband. The marriage would have worked, but because he was cheating. The marriage would have worked, but because of his family. The marriage would have worked, but because of that girl. It was the second... Ah! That's what women like. They always look for justification why the marriage it would have worked where it was the side chick now lie a lot of time your marriage failed because of you it has nothing to do with side chick because you leave your marriage and focus on the thing that is not really that that is the issue then after yawa congas you go and begin go church come they pray to god make him bring back your husband from where exactly bring my man home god bring him home bring him i'll be like what the f Fuck is this? Are these people mad? Oh, mom, mom, let him walk home. Change my husband from cheating. Any woman in my husband's life, story. Die, die, die. Now lie. If prayer they kill women, many of them for don't die. You know they kill them. 
if you don't treat your husband right, another woman will collect them. If you like, pray from today to tomorrow. Rabba seke saka saka, it doesn't work. Shit. Guidance. Pray for guide. Don't pray for solution. The solution lies within you. That's all I want to tell you in this video. Because you guys focus so much on the solution. Guide. When you go down on your knees to pray, tell God, give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. Give me on the right path. Let me come across something. Like some people who send me messages sometimes tell me blessing. You just blessed me this morning. And some people that are not following me that were just going through Instagram and they just stumbled on a video of mine that changed their life. That was God. When you pray for guidance, God will put the things that you need beneath your feet. You will see it. That thing you get to hear that morning, God will just put it on your Instagram page. As you're entering Instagram, you start watching it. Normally, you don't watch long videos. You just see yourself watching this particular because that's what you needed at that point. That's guidance. Pray for guide. The solution is right inside of you. Many of you do not understand that you were made out of you, God's image. Some of you don't read Bible. You own Bibles. If you understand that you were made out of God's own image, trust me, eh? there's some stupidity that you display that you will not display. I don't know it all. Don't think I know it all. But I know the vital things of life. It's like a secret. It's like sitting down with a billionaire. Do you know why many of us want to sit down with a billionaire? We want to sit down with billionaires just for them to guide us. Don't give me money, just guide me. If I sit with a toddler, a toddler today, or a dangote, just 10 minutes with dangote, dangote will tell me, this was how I made money, this was how it went when I was buying cement. In 10 minutes, I would have been able to grab a guidance from dangote. Guess what? The things that make you successful are the smallest things. That thing you call motivational speaker. <clears throat> That's your breakthrough. But you don't pay attention. As I'm even making this video now, somebody is asking me on the comment section, blessing, why did your marriage fail? Now, it shows you how stupid people are. You're asking me, blessing, why did my marriage fail? You cannot even stand the failure. Here is a woman who her marriage failed, is sitting down to guide you on why your own should not fail. And you are asking me a foolish question. And your own will still fail. And you still come and pay me. Why are you stupid? Stupidity. Some of you are not even paying attention to wonder. You need this thing I'm saying, but you don't want to pay attention. You are focused more on, oh, blessing you. Oh, yo, see this person where they talk. You still fail at it. You still come back to me. This same failure. Because some of you will only come back to me when you fail. Some people that say, oh, blessing your marriage fail. The moment your own marriage fail, you will remember me. I'll be the first person you remember. Because when you divorce, I'm the most popular um, relationship expert that is divorced. So when you divorce, you will remember me. You will come to me and you will pay me. Remember you did not listen, no? Oh? <laughs> you don't have to wait until you are a victim now. It is only victims that, why? You don't have to be a victim. You don't have to wait. And by the time you divorce, you will not come and ask blessing. Why did you divorce? You will listen to me because you are going to pay me millions. Because in future, I intend to have a divorce lawyer in my therapy lounge. When you come to my office, I have a divorce lawyer in case you need help. So my therapy lounge is going to be in Lagos. I'm going to have an, a divorce lawyer. If you want to divorce your husband, we help you. If you want to make up, we help you. If you want to break up, we help you. That's break or make up. So you still come to me for help. Don't worry. Don't pay attention. I will be here. Still talking. You know, I'm blessing. How come you divorce your own husband? How come you divorce your own husband? Some of you that are asking me that question, I still look younger than you. I'm still finer than you. I'm still, my breast is still standing more than your own. You know, Jim, how come you do? Can you divorce your husband and still look as beautiful as I am? It's not possible. The moment the man divorces you now, you are depressed or you are suicidal. How many of you can divorce your husband and still be a sane, intellectually sound, like a coral blessing? Divorce will come out your brain. But me, I divorce and I'm still sane. You know, easy. Try and first. 
So my daddy, in order not to join this WhatsApp group, pay attention. Listen, oh, collect guidance, oh. Make you understand how this journey will be. Except you go window, you go miss road, you go loss, <laughs> and the road, you know, is na bumpy day that road, bad road day, kidnappers day, bandit day, go go around day. I even heard that Bakasi boys is back. They did the road, hoodlums, hand chan ever. The road no easy, oh. no listen, no here. Juba bless no koro you. You are divorced. How come you divorced? No worry. Time is coming when you are going to pay me. And the question will not even come out of your mouth, sir. Okay, go on. <laughs> With this viewpoint of mine, I hope I've been able to convince and not to confuse you that it's time to change your prayer point. I want you to begin to pray for guidance, not for solution. Because a lot of the solutions you're praying for is you. Now you. For solution to happen in your life, you must be ready to let go of something to allow another thing come into your life. And that's the meaning of God. You're praying for God so that God can be able to give you the wisdom to know what to throw away and give space for that thing you are praying for. Because when you pray and you do not give space for that prayer point, it cannot come. It cannot enter because everywhere is blocked. It will just be hovering around you like this. <laughs> so wisdom simply means God. Open my eyes to knowing that this man is not good enough for me. It's time to go. Bye-bye. God, open my eyes now. This woman is not good enough for me. It's time to go. Bye bye. For the things you're praying for to come. Many of you are the one hindering yourself by the things you have allowed into your life. Many of you, the cause of your problem is what is in your life. Guess what? That thing that is in your life is the thing that you are allowed. The things that you are allowed to come in. It's you that open door for the things to come into your life. Now, the solution is not by praying God, God, God. Because it was not God that opened door. It was you that opened door. This is a simple psychology. You met a girl that you like. You asked her out. She did? Good. You are in love with this girl. You brought her into your life. You gave her money. You accommodated her. You had sex with her. You married her. Is that not it? Good. God did not marry her for you. All this decision, you took it on your own. Don't forget that part too. Because when you post that, this is your prayer point. You don't used to remember this part. Do you understand my point? Good. Now, the fact is, um, you've accommodated this girl into your life. In fact, you decided to marry the girl. Right? Good. Now, when you brought this girl into your life, and she started to misbehave, she started to give attitude, she changed, you are not praying for God to throw her out. Was it God that brought her in before? Decision. No matter how much you pray, you are still the one to decide. So the reason why I say you should pray for guidance is for God to be able to, to guide you to make the right decision for your life. Because you are the one that will still agree and disagree. God does not do that one for you. When he did it for Adam, Adam came and said, God, it is the woman that you gave to me that they gave me food to chop. So you need to be conscious to understand that those things you pray for are the things you are allowed this love, 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 marriage, marriage. It's you that marry the man. You will marry the man. I come and be disturbing us. I come and be disturbing. It's you that made the decision. Because when you were marrying that man and God had told you not to marry the man, you wouldn't have agreed. Many of you who made wrong decisions today that are regretting it. When some people were telling you that it was wrong decision, did you not fight all of them? Maybe you told them, get out, mind your business, motivational speaker, get out. But then when everything began to unfold, you started looking for sympathy from the same people you asked to mind their business. So when you have an understanding of this, right, you'll be conscious of your prayer. You will know what you are praying about. And life will be a bit more, much, 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 much easier for you. Some of you have just contradicted your lives by the decisions that you make. Like I said, while you are making that prayer, remember, you made the choice. That's one thing many of you always forget when you are praying. You made the choice. You are still the same person who is going to unmake that choice. Not God. God will only give you the wisdom. God will give you the strength. God will give you the power. God will give you the right direction to make that decision. It's just like when people come on the on Instagram to 
show their stupidity by saying, oh, you are divorced, you are divorced. Do most of you think that divorce is easy? <laughs> if you see any man or any woman that is divorced, go give them a handshake. Most of you can pass through it, you go die. At the top come with my full chest. If many of you pass through the divorce that we passed through, you go die. Small heartbreak. You won't die. You don't a drink sniper. Man talk say no do it again. You won't kill yourself. You ordinary relationship, boyfriend, no pick call, you don't die. Small cheating. You don't already drink sniper, don't they sing? I want to die. I'm talking about divorce. Do you know what we went through? <laughs> so when I see most of you mocking your foolishness, I laugh. Because these are people who survived battles that you can't even fight. So it's a war, my darling. Serious war. And for you to divorce and come out of it, it simply means God gave you strength. Because for you to go through a divorce, you need strength. Emotionally, financially, mentally, spiritually. Hey, hey. If you see anybody who went through a divorce and come out and the person is still saying, Go and give the person a handshake because you heartbreak, you don't fit. Man will not be your husband and leave you. You don't die. You not give him money again. You don't die. You never bump nothing, no commitment to you don't already die. Because half of the half of the emails I get every day of my life is small, small girls. Say, my boyfriend wants to leave me. My boyfriend leave me. And they are the ones that will come and insult somebody that is divorced on Instagram. Ordinary, my boyfriend leave me. If I open my email for you, oh God. <laughs> Ordinary boyfriend, you know, pick up for three days. The girl don't carry sniper, won't drink. Say the boyfriend deal with another woman. And you go through a divorce. <laughs> so it's it's so easy to spot ignorant and foolish people on the comment session. So when you see them and they want to mock anybody who have gone through a divorce, tell them that I said they are idiots. It's only an idiot that will mock somebody who have gone through a divorce. Because that shit is war. And it takes a warrior to go for war and win a battle after winning the battle you tell the story you did not just tell the story you use it to teach people to learn from your scars and your mistakes only warriors do it cowards can't even try it cowards don't go to war cowards don't fight warriors go to war they win after winning they tell stories after telling stories they use it to teach people. For those of you who always wonder why why is blessing so bold? <laughs> there are some certain things you're not going to hide when you understand the battle you fought. You know, some of you always hide your scars because you don't even know the battles that you fought. So that's why it's easy for you to go through some certain things in your life. You'll be hiding it. You went through a divorce, you hide it. You went through a particular sickness, you hide it. You survive cancer, you hide it. You know, you can be hiding nonsense. You don't even understand the battle that you fought. <laughs> so with this few power I hope I've been able to convince and not to confuse you that you should pray for guidance more than you pray for solutions. Thank you so much for coming to my live video. God bless every one of you. So I think I'm going to just take two questions from you guys. Two questions. And I'm good to go. Adam, let's go. So let's have two questions from you guys, guys. Two questions. I'm just gonna take two questions. Two questions. I said to go all natural today. It's cool, right? I said to look a bit more innocent and more babyish kind of. So you're welcome, darling. You're welcome, darling. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, somebody said, please, my CEO, I want to ask you a question. Can someone marry a man that loves money more than his girlfriend? Please. And he will not want you to go to school, but once you become a business owner. Now somebody is saying, can you marry a man that loves money more than his girlfriend? Now that you know that this man loves money more than his girlfriend, what are you still doing there? So you're asking me a foolish question. You know that this is a problem. Why do you want to enter the problem? This man loves money more than his girlfriend. Yet you still want to date him. And you're not asking me what should you do. 
you cannot be stressing my head. Because if you identify a problem, you can solve it. Since you know that this man likes money more than his girlfriend, and you still want to date him, go and deal with the situation. Why are you not asking me? Don't give me my ring. Don't give me headache! Next question. Um, let's take the next question. Why do you always introduce yourself in your videos? I introduce myself in my videos because every day I get new people who get to follow me. And many of you do not know who I am. So introducing yourself is like walking into a place and telling people my name is Blessing. So introduction is very, very important because a lot of people don't know you. So you need to tell them who you are. I need to tell you who I am for you to be able to identify me and call me that. Some of you don't know I'm a relationship expert. You just saw me on blogs. Do you? As much as I even introduce myself, people still see me on the road and call me an actress. Hey, blessing, are you not that actress? Somebody even called me a musician. Because most of you are not used to relationship therapies. That's why I keep sounding into your head. It's called identity. Next question. I'm taking two questions, but I'm going to take more. Mm, hello, I have a question. Can a man marry a lady who has had fling in the past with his younger brother? It's his choice. It was just a fling. Like I used to say, marriage starts from marriage. Once you marry a woman, all things are passed away. You can only judge her with what she did in the marriage, not before she met you. You cannot meet me and you not be judging me with the things I did before I met you. Oga, you were not there. It was the things that I did before I met you that molded me into the woman that you are seeing today. If I did not do those things, you are not going to see the blessing see you are seeing today. So if you want to judge me with my past, then there will be no me. Because I'm not my past. Because if this man has seen you in your past, he wouldn't have married you. So he's not marrying your past, he's marrying your future. So if you have fling with his brother, uh, don't stress my life. I did not have fling with your brother when I was married to you. I had fling with your brother when I was not married to you. So why are you stressing me? Simple. Was wondering if you would love to get a dope logo of your business. Oh, I already have a logo, darling. So thank you very much. Most people will get married. Okay, I think I'm... Okay. So I think I'm done with the question. <clears throat> How can a very skinny lady feel feminine and confident um a very skinny lady feel feminine and confident confidence is a choice and choice is sitting down and acknowledging who you are i'm a woman who is also skinny i'm a skinny person if you notice most times in my comment section people body shame me i think sometimes people tell me oh see your thin leg because then somebody came to insult me and said blessing you have thin leg and i was asking her am i supposed to have fat leg when i'm slim i don't understand but some people will actually be ashamed because they have thin leg so I asked the woman, please, Mark, can I ask a question? Is my leg supposed to be fat when I'm actually slim? So I'm not come and say, you have flat nyash. Can I ask them, is my nyash supposed to be bigger than my towels? I don't understand. So you see most of those people are, and when you see people who body shame you, people who, they are nobody. So you need to be able to own your personality, who, whatever you look like, your leg is slim, or you are thin, or you are fat, anyhow you look like, you need to be able to own it. And know how beautiful you are and carry yourself like a queen people that you see that are queens they're not perfect people who are queens just understood what is called courage and that's the bet of costume those things you wear covers all your imperfections so a queen is not a perfect woman a queen is a woman that understands how to carry herself so how to carry yourself starts with what you wear if you feel that it's a part of your body you're not comfortable with, you cover it. If you feel your leg is too thin and you don't want to wear, you don't wear, wear trousers, nobody will see your thin leg. If you feel you have stretch mark, cover the stretch mark. If, there's a set, if you feel your nash is flat, there's some kind of clothes you will wear, people will not even get to see your shape. you still be looking classy and posh. That's the honest truth. So, it's identifying who you are and knowing what you want to show and knowing what you want to hide. If you want to show your imperfection, your choice, if you want to hide it, your choice. But nobody is perfect. Everybody's hiding something. Even the most beautiful woman you admire on Instagram today, now few that cover all of them, they all have comma. All your celebrities have comma. They just wear nice clothes, snap nice picture, use nice filter, live in beautiful houses, but they are all struggling with something. So it's called identity. You identify those part of you, you feel you're not very comfortable with it. 
cover it or you own it. There are just two things to identity. If you feel there's something you're not comfortable about, you cover it or you own it. Me, I'm not ready to cover anything. I own it. My leg thin. Leave and like that. I don't get bull like a worker. You cannot tell me my leg is thin. My leg is thin and straight. <laughs> rest, madam, rest. Now this same thin leg, people they go so you go come off fat for their leg. People pay to have the kind of leg I have. They go to the doctor and say my leg is too fat. And I tell them that my leg is thin. Madam, rest. Rest your purpose. <laughs> so confidence is a choice. You are the one that's gonna build that for yourself. So I think I'm done with the questions. Are we good? Eat a shake. Eat a shake. Eat a shake. Eat a shake. Are we good? Somebody said, can somebody be in a relationship and there is no form of financial support from your partner, but he sure but 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 you're sure he loves you and wants to marry you, please. Is it right? <laughs> Listen to this follower. She said she's in a relationship with somebody. And the person does not give her any form of financial support and she's sure that the person loves her my darling if you are sure that that man loves you you will not be writing this thing you just said you're in a relationship you are sure that he loves you and he wants to marry you. if you are sure you won't even be commenting here the reason why you are complaining is because you're not sure he loves you i've told you before love anybody that is in love with you and cannot give you does not love you Love comes with giving. And I've told you guys before, men are givers by nature. Women are receivers by nature. Women are collectors and keepers. If a man is not giving you, he's giving someone else. I said what I said with my full chest. Any man that is not giving you, he's giving somebody else. So if you're in a relationship and your man is not giving you, my darling, you are dating yourself. That's my question. What is he doing with his money? If he's not giving you, what is he doing with his life? Many men are even rushing to make money to go and give their girlfriends. A lot of boys are doing Yahoo right now. Once the man, once the Yahoo boy just hits money, who does he use to call first? He doesn't even go to his mother. He just call his girlfriend to go and stay in the hotel and buy bands and lavish the money. Your ordinary Yahoo boy go make money, give girlfriend. Come be boyfriend where he talks, say love you. No, go give you money. Madam, rest a bit. Some of you are just desperate. And when you are desperate, you are blinded. Desperation makes you blind. It makes you not to see facts. Right? So you are so blinded to the fact that you don't want to see facts. And that's one reason I said, I'm scared of getting married. Now, I want to marry my friend. Because a lot of relationship therapists that are married can't tell you the truth. Because they are protecting their marriage. Yeah. They don't want to say anything contrary to marriage. So they will be lying to you. Yeah. Because they are protecting something. I don't want to get to the peak of my career where I can no longer tell you the truth. That's why I'm scared of getting married. Bye bye. Let me cover this one up. Mm -hmm. No, I see the odds. <laughs> you are even married. So me and my husband they quarrel. I can't tell him. I say we they quarrel to do two weeks. I'm not talking to him except he beg me. Yes, <laughs> because people always want to paint perfection for you about marriage, but. I'm that woman who wants to tell you what happens behind closed doors. Marriage is not perfect. People always want to make you look as if it's TikTok. Or, that's a lie. A lot of times, you quarrel more in marriage. Do you know when you start enjoying marriage? You start enjoying marriage at when your children have grown. Yes. You might not even enjoy marriage from the beginning. It's just people are just getting to know each other. It's when your children have grown. That's where, that's where it looks as if at that point, you and your husband is not brother and sister. You have mastered your character. Your wife knows where to ignore you. Your husband knows where to ignore you. They know when to talk. They've studied you. That's where marriage becomes fun. But from the beginning of marriage to the middle of marriage, we are getting to know each other. So there will always be that boost. <laughs> we will we'll curse each other. Get away! I don't need you no more. Get the fuck out of here. I don't need you. Who the fuck do you think you are? I can do without you. I love. One week later, baby, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say all the things I said. I don't know what came into me. I was upset. That same guy, he said, I can't do without you. I'm not going to reconcile. One month later, rubbish! Nonsense! That's why it's called break up and make up. And that's what makes it interesting. You understand that point? That point that you want to go. But you cannot go. 
you want to leave him. He's not the only man on the world. He's not the most handsome, but you don't. You are still dead. That is marriage. So anybody that's coming to paint hanky panky, now there is more buzzbos in marriage than love. Who. The buzzbos that I they tell you, I they tell you. So get out by your marriage. You must ready for buzzbos. Buzzbos does not mean fight. It means we go party. We go misunderstand each other. We go argue. No, don't tell me that. I want to go to Lagos. You are not going to Lagos, baby. I will go. You will not go. I will go. You will not go. You're my wife. You stick your ass. You're my husband. You listen to me. No, dear. I'm the man. No, dear. I am the woman. No, dear. I am the man. I am the woman. That's what I'm going to argue. I know there are sometimes you just sit with your spouses and reminisce on the arguments you guys have had. And you're like, oh, God, you're just being foolish. That's the truth. Sometimes the fight is sweet. The fight makes the whole thing interesting. So that's the part of marriage a lot of people don't want to tell you. That's the truth. They don't want to tell you that part. But when you are aware about that part, when it begins to happen, you won't run. Because you understand that it's just a rain that will be over. A lot of you, once it just start raining, you don't run, go define self shelter. No, it's a rain that will be because rain will always come, sun will always come. So marriage is that point that when you don't have an understanding about marriage, you have this Bella Ninja mindset once the rain start to fall you say hey, 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 hey. you want to run hey, hey. but when you understand that this man will at the end that rain will fall sun will shine things will happen you will have that mindset and you prepare yourself so that's why no matter how they throw me i want to tell you the truth about marriage no matter how they throw me some people say blessing don't like marriage blessing don't divorce the truth about it is reality will always play and when reality play you will remember me like I told you guys, I want to be remembered. I want by the time you become a victim, you first thing you say is, Kai! Blessing said it to Hi! It happened. Hi! This woman said it in her video. That is when you begin to respect. You will not respect me now until you become a victim. You know, victims have more respect. When you become vulnerable, you have sense more. And when you become a victim, I'll, be, I'll start to look like a god to you, like a prophet. It simply means, you are a victim. Everything I said have come to pass in your life. You know, say, hey, this girl, no, I'm not a prophet. These are realities. That whether you like it or not. Somebody came and told me one day on my comment section, blessing, I disagree with you. I told the girl, your disagreement does not change facts. Whether you disagree with me or you don't agree with me, it doesn't change facts. That's the truth. And I'm very, very opinionated because I'm a factual person. You see me very strong with my opinion because I'm factual. I hardly bend. You see a lot of people want to come and advise me and you get to see their advice and you're like, what the fuck is this person saying? I'm a very factual person. If I fuck up, I if tell myself, say I fuck up. And I'm one person when I fuck up, I, I go back to say I'm sorry. I don't get shy saying I'm sorry when I mess up. Good, so, uh, I think I answered that question, right? Good. So we're good to go. With these people of mine, I think I've been able to answer the question right. So guys, I think I'm going to have to let you guys go right now. Please, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click the link on the bio to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so very, very much. I love you guys and have a wonderful and a very splendid night.